I'm Dylan. Hi, I'm Jujibe. We are here on behalf of Think First Canada to talk to you about one of the most terrifying things that can happen to anyone, but especially to teenagers, spinal cord injuries. Besides, it's so hot, I could use a swim. Come on, Rick. It's a party, right? It's all about having fun. It's not the drinking I mind. It's just that I promised my parents I wouldn't allow anyone to drink and then drive home. I promise, Susan, I won't let Rick or any of the other guys drink and drive. Besides, the last thing Rick needs is to be in a crash. He just got a full hockey scholarship. He's gonna be a real star. No drinking and driving, I promise. See? how it's done. Are you sure, Rick? You had a lot to drink. I know, but it's my reputation I gotta think about. Don't worry. As you've just seen, a spinal cord injury caused from diving into shallow water and hitting your head on the bottom happens in a heartbeat. And there is no cure for a spinal cord injury. Once the damage is done, it's permanent. As in Rick's case, it can leave you paralyzed from the neck down. Hi, is Rick home? Hey, Rick. Come to say goodbye? My parents, uh, they said I have to go to college. They, they won't let me stick around. I'll be back around Christmas. Listen, Rick, I'm, I'm really sorry this all happened to you. I wish, I wish I'd stopped you from diving into the pool. You were drunk and uh, this is all my fault. Alcohol seems to be a real problem here. Just like drinking and driving, drinking and diving don't mix well together either. Exactly. You know, it's fine to know what you should and shouldn't do around the water when you're sober, but when you're too drunk to think, you're just gonna dive right in anyway. Not only that, even a little bit of alcohol still really slows down your motor responses. Your reflexes and coordination are off, so instead of doing a good dive, you just hit the water and go straight to the bottom. That's a sure way to break your neck. But I see the wrong trailer again after another beer or two. Went back up the tree and I dove. And I dove out too far after they dared me to try a swan dive. I dove out too far and I hit a sandbar, which is about a foot deep off of a 35 foot tree. And uh, I was stuck in the, in the sand floating with my arms stuck to my chest. Okay, so then what's the answer? Don't drink around the water. Well, I know that, but sometimes it just happens anyway. Like my brother has a party every year up at the cottage with all his college buddies. And there's a lot of drinking going on. We're going to be over soon, I guess. Yeah, that'll be good. Yeah, that's good. Thanks, brother. Whoa, well, I'll be watching. Pat's another beer now. Yeah, she was telling us the other day about how she came in early in the morning and 
She was in bed at before I was. Yeah, I couldn't believe that. Sometimes they just go right up to the dock and drink. Come on, let's go for a dip. Great idea. Bet you I can dive farther than you can. <laughs> In your dreams, maybe. Your brother has to be aware of the danger. I mean, the last thing he would want to see is one of his best friends paralyzed for the rest of his life. Okay, so in other words, it's his duty as host to stay sober enough to take responsibility to make sure that nobody gets hurt. It's only fair. Hey guys, don't dive off the dock. Don't worry, we're not afraid of a little water. It's not about the water. Look, this water's only so deep. You'll break your neck if you dive in here. Wow, looks deeper from up here. It just looks deep, it's not. Wow, thanks. If that wasn't smart, I don't want to break my neck. You have to be a responsible host at a pool party, too. What is up here? Went to a pool party with my boyfriend, and um, I guess a lot of people were just sitting around the pool and drink, drinking, and um, everything was fine. And then people, I guess, um, started jumping off the roof and kind of scared me because I knew, like, I thought to myself, like, this is dangerous, somebody's gonna get hurt. But I guess all at all the parties, guys think it's a joke to throw girls in the pool and so they threw a couple of my friends in and everything was okay and I got out and was just standing by the edge of the pool and my boyfriend came up behind me and pushed me into the pool and I wasn't really expecting it I guess and I hit my neck on the slant of the pool and I heard it crack and I just floated to the top. What I don't understand is why doctors can't just fix your spinal cord. I mean, guys break their arms and legs all the time. I have a friend who broke his arm in a football game, and my brother just broke his ankle falling off a ladder. They're both okay now. Bones can be fixed, but there's still no cure for a damaged spinal cord. To be honest, I really don't know that much about spinal cords. Well, let's ask someone who knows. Hi, my name is Dr. Eric Masikov. Jujube is right. Everything your body does is controlled by your brain. When you pick up a ball, throw a stick, ride your bike. Your spinal cord is what carries the message from your brain to your legs and arms so you can move them. When you hit the bottom of the pool too hard, you snap your head forward or backwards and break your neck. If your spinal cord inside the spine is damaged, the message from your brain or your legs can't get there anymore. A paraplegic is someone who's lost function in their legs whereas a quadriplegic is someone who's lost function in their arms and legs. This relates back to the level of injury. For example, as in diving, you can injure your neck and therefore the loss of function can be higher up. In some cases, the loss of function can be more dramatic. In fact, some people lose their function with respect to breathing. So they are unable to breathe and need to be on a breathing machine, just like Christopher Reeves. The toughest thing emotionally to do with now is the fact that I can't reach out and touch the ones I love. Uh, really makes me feel sad. When you're paralyzed, it's not just your legs, but you know, all my abdominal muscles, my chest muscles, uh, my bowels, my bladder is paralyzed. It means I can't shit and piss quite the way I used to. I can't imagine what it would be like to be healthy and active one minute, and the next to wake up on a stretcher with doctors drilling holes into your skull and having to wear a big head brace. Then there's that terrible moment when you realize that you're never going to get better. This is how you're going to be for the rest of your life. I was laying on a stretcher, you had shaved my head, and uh, I made two incisions on the side of my head for attraction, which, which would help hold my head down at the bed bar, which was about 15 pounds of weight, so I couldn't move my neck around. Everybody says, oh, it just takes time. Kind of hard to see, like, I don't know, they say, like, just give it a couple of months and you'll get things back, and it's just kind of hard to be patient. And... When you're paralyzed, you can't dress yourself, you can't feed yourself, you can't comb your hair, you can't even go to the bathroom without somebody helping you. Do you imagine someone have to be in the bathroom with you every time you have to go? It's really, 
frustrated, you know what that must feel? And it's all because you chose to drink and dive. If you've ever hit your head on the bottom of a shallow pool or a lake, chances are you've come pretty close to seriously injuring yourself. Count yourself lucky for still having use of your arms and legs. Many people think that it's okay to dive into above ground pools because they can do a shallow dive. Sounds pretty risky. It is. One of the first rules for preventing spinal cord injuries is to never, never dive from an above ground pool. Yeah, they're, they're much too shallow. Even the people who make them tell you not to dive into them. Well, what about diving into the ocean or a big lake? It has to be okay to dive into the ocean. Well, not always. What do you mean? In an ocean or even in the lake, the tides and surf can be so strong that it can change the location of the sandbars. That's why you have to check before diving. Sure, that makes sense. I remember when I would swim in the ocean, the waves would just knock me right over. So I stood up and just took two steps and dove. And what happened was my head, the top of my head, hit the sandbar. It was much more shallower than I realized. So the idea is to go into the water feet first, first time, even at the beach, and watch for the changing tides. There's this place up in cottage country where my friends and I dive all the time. We can't see the bottom, but we know it's deep enough. Do you know that the water levels in rivers and lakes around Canada are lower than they've ever been before? So that places that used to be safe to dive aren't safe anymore? Plus, the lake ice during the winter moves dead trees and rocks around. Well, that's not good news. I like going to the cottage in the summer. It's fun to dive off the rocks. It doesn't mean that you can't go there and dive anymore. It just means that before you dive, you need to make sure that the water is still deep enough. Okay, so then how do we know if it's deep enough if we can't see the bottom? All you have to do is walk into the water first and check to see if the water is deep enough to dive. Or make sure you dive in feet first the first time. Well, doesn't the water slow you down when you dive in? Yes, but at many resorts and backyard swimming pools, the water is too shallow. Remember that most injuries occur in water that's only over a meter deep. Okay, so then how deep does the water have to be in order for a dive to be absolutely safe? The rule is that unless you know how to shallow dive properly, and very few people do, that the water depth must be twice your own height. I don't know many pools that are that deep. The one at my school only goes to about two meters. That's why it's important to know what you're doing in order to dive safely. You need to know the proper dive angle and the proper technique. Well, I can do a shallow dive, but I've never taken any lessons. So you're taking a risk every time you dive? I guess so. Maybe I should take some lessons. Good idea. Let's ask Philippe to show us how. Philippe Comtois from the Canadian National Diving Team? Sure, why not learn from the best? Wow. Philippe, can you show us how to properly shallow dive? Ah, uh, no problem. That's how it goes. Just have to put your feet about the size as your shoulders. You put your hands on your feet. You bend your knees. Your arm swings behind. And you just push forward, aiming from the other side of the pool. I had family members coming in devastated by what had happened to me the day before. They would look at me crying and I would be responsible for their emotional stability and reassure them that everything was okay. Meanwhile, I was questioning exactly what was happening to me at that time. And that's why it's important to look out for the ones that we care about, because their lives are affected too. If I saw my boyfriend about to drink and dive, I'd stop him somehow, even if I had to tackle him. I just didn't want to be like this. I was, didn't think my girlfriend would love me anymore, and I didn't have anything to offer anybody, and... Pretty scary feeling, not knowing what's gonna happen. She didn't fall in love with somebody who was paralyzed. She fell in love with somebody who was able-bodied. She couldn't accept me, and we both realized that. Because of that, I couldn't accept me, and I couldn't grow. And uh, it was very difficult for me, and the relationship ended. I don't even know what my girlfriend would do if I was suddenly paralyzed from the neck down, just because I was too drunk and decided to jump into the shallow end of a pool. Would she stay with you? I don't know. I'm, I'm sure she'd be there for me. But sooner or later, I think she'd start to realize what the rest of her life would be like with me in a wheelchair.
You know, diving is a lot of fun. I've been doing it since I was eight years old. I've traveled all around the world. But diving is a dangerous sport. You need rules, like soccer, like gymnastics. Here are the plain and simple rules to remember about diving into a pool. Don't dive if you have been drinking because your reaction time is maybe too slow. Unless you know how to shallow dive properly, never dive into a pool unless the depth is twice your own height. Never dive into an above ground pools, they are too shallow. Despite all warnings posted on the side of the pool, such as no diving and shallow end, it is amazing how many swimmers just go ahead and dive anyway. You have to know how deep the water is. There's nothing like being around the water on a hot summer's day. I couldn't agree with you more. And to keep having fun, there are two main things we need to remember. If you're not sure how deep the water is, go feet first, first time. And please, don't drink and dive. Goodbye, and enjoy the water. Goodbye.